What's up team? Today I'm stepping into a CMU shear wall design example. That's right, we are dipping our toe into the waters of CMU block construction. I haven't done a whole lot of this, so bear with me. I may make a mistake or two, and if I do that, leave a comment, let me know so I can better myself along with all of you. But we're diving into how to calculate the shear capacity of a reinforced masonry shear wall. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, what are we gonna take away from the information given? Well, some crucial stuff, eight inch CMU block. We have a seismic design category equal to D. All of the info in the figure, really critical. Um, we have a self weight, that'll denote like that, of the CMU block of 85 pounds per square foot. And that, if you think about it, since it's, you might be saying, why is that so heavy? It's fully grouted, so you have a fully grouted block and, you know, eight inches, so you can almost think about it like concrete, 150 pounds per cubic foot, eight inches thick, so eight over 12 times 150, that's 100 pounds uh, per square foot if it was pure concrete, so CMU grouted is a little bit lighter than that, and so 85 pounds per square foot sounds pretty good to me. And, uh, we are doing LRFD strength level design. So I'm gonna go with this today. I myself am newer to CMU design, so take this with a grain of salt, like I said before, but let's just jump right in. Well, first we wanna know uh, the self weight of our entire wall. I'm gonna denote that as WW, the weight of wall. That's denoted as followed. 85 PSF times a height of 16 feet of wall in our figure times the length of wall, which is six feet, again, from our figure. This is denoted as LW to us. We'll divide everything by a thousand to keep it in kips. That's gonna equate to 8.16 kips of mass. That's just additional dead load. Um, another good piece of info looking up above here, rho equal to 1.0. C sub S 0.17, because now we are going to calculate the additional uh, lateral force that is induced on this wall, induced by the self weight of the wall itself, not just from the diaphragm forces. We'll call that VW, that'll be the additional shear demand on the wall from the self weight of the wall itself, equal to the weight of the wall times C sub S. That spits out 1.39 kips, that is additional E horizontal. Now let's find all of our maximum demands on our shear wall. Well, we're doing LRFD. Let's find max shear. That's gonna be load combo as follows. E horizontal is what we're, what we're really looking at when we're determining our maximum shear demand. So that's just 1.0. There's no other factor we need to apply. So we can confidently say VU is equal to VD, and that's uh, shear demand from the diaphragm. And if we scroll back up, ah, VD, they already called it that. That's that nine kips plus VW, the shear from uh, the self weight of the wall, which we just determined up above here, right here. So that gets us of 10.39 kips equaling VU. Sorry if my big head's in the way. And again, that's strength level shear, V. U. Next, let's find our maximum moment. That's gonna be load case of the same. So again, no load factors needed for our lateral demand, it's all 1.0. So we can go about, say, MU is equal to nine kips, that's from our uh, story shear, times full height of the wall, which is 16 feet, plus the demand from our wall, 1.39 kips, with, a store, with half the story height, so the centroid of the wall itself. So 16 feet over two, if we scroll back up. Basically we're saying that the centroid of the mass of the wall is at mid height of the wall, so that VW is being applied right there while VD is being applied up top. So your moment arm is effectively one half of H, and H being 16. That all spits out 155 kip feet. Let's box that up. And that's strength level moment. Next, we're gonna find our strength level axial load on the wall. That's gonna be a load case. Again, the same thing, but this time we actually have to do something because, well, E sub H is equal to 1.0. EV breaks down to 0.2 SDS. Uh, dead load and stay dead load consistent. I'll just keep it as a D. So 
above did they give us SDS? They did 0.826G. That spits out 0.165D. Now, I'm just gonna make it green real quick. If we plug that back in for this part of the equation, that will spit out 1.2D plus 0.165D to get us a total D of 1.365D. So we can use that um, and for our factor for our axial load. So with that said, PU is equal to, um, let's go up, check out our dead load, 400 pounds per foot. We'll keep that in kips, so that'll be 0.4 KLF. 0.4 KLF times a length of six feet of wall, plus the weight of our wall, which we've already calculated. Scroll up just a little bit here. Weight of our wall, 8.16 kips. And we're gonna take all of that, because that's the total dead load, and we're gonna multiply it by our load case factor of, and I'll make it green, keep it consistent, 1.365. And that spits out 14.42 kips uh, equal to PU. We'll box that up. All right, cool, we got all our demands. Now, when using the strength level design procedure for uh, calculating shear capacity, your shear strength, uh, VN, is gonna be equal to two components, VNM, for the shear capacity of your masonry or the CMU block with the additional shear capacity VNS of your horizontal steel reinforcing in your shear wall, if it's even present. Um, if we go up here, you'll see that we are in seismic design category D, which means that we will need some type of minimum required steel regardless of the capacity of the masonry wall that we calculate but we'll go through the steps and I'll show you kind of uh, through numbers uh, what I'm kind of talking about. All right, well, let's start by finding the capacity of our masonry alone. First, we're gonna use the equation MUVUDV, and this is called the shear to span depth ratio, and we're gonna need this for the following equations. So we're gonna solve for this first, which is gonna be 155 kip feet divided by VU, which is 10.39 kips, which again, we solved above. And then DV, you might be asking, what the heck is that thing? Well, that's the depth of the section in the direction of the applied shear. And in our case, uh, let's see, if I go over here, actually, I'll scroll up. The applied shear is going that way. So we need depth of the section here because this is the direction of the shear being applied. So. If we were to look down on our wall, we'd have a wall section like that. This would be DV because our shear is being applied this way. And DV means it's just equal to the length of the wall, WL, which is six feet. Careful units here. If this were to be kip inches, then you would switch this to inches and vice versa, pounds, pounds, just keep everything the same and it will get you the same answer, but you need to keep it consistent here. That spits out 2.48, which need not exceed 1.0. So we can just use 1.0 moving forward. VNM is per the following equation. And this is per the TMS 402, equation 3-23. But double check me on that just in case. F prime M, I believe was given to us of 3,000 pounds per square inch. And while we're here, we have a rebar of 60 KSI. 3,000 PSI and we have AN. That is just the net area of the uh, wall that we're checking. So an eight inch wall is actually 7.63 inches wide and it's six feet long. So six feet, and we're gonna convert that to inches, 12 inches per foot is gonna get us 549 square inches of block. That can get plugged into here. This can get plugged into here. This equation in here is just our shear span to depth ratio, which we solved for up here, but it need not be taken greater than 1.0. So that actually just gets crossed out because that's just 1.0. And PU, we solved for above. So great, we have everything. Let's plug everything in and let's see what we get. That gets us 71.3 kips 
of total shear capacity um, from our block itself. And I did throw in a divide by a thousand, um, but you wanna make sure that you, because it's under a square root, you take the square root of the 3000 PSI and then afterwards you can convert to get it into kips, but don't convert it into kips uh, before you square root it or else the numbers start to get weird. Masonry subject to shear, we have our fee factor equal to 0 0.8 and that is TMS 402, and eh, I'll write it out. TMS 402 section 3.1.4.5. So phi VN uh, M is equal to 57 kips, which is already greater than VU equal to 10.39 kips. So just the block itself is adequate to resist um, that shear demand. So moving forward, uh, you may say, well, does that mean I even need to put in reinforcing if I just proved that it works? Well, again, we're in seismic design category D, so you have minimums that you have to meet um, in terms of detailing your wall. So let's move forward from there. Let's um, meet the minimums. Then we will account for that steel and the extra, extra capacity that you get from it. Combine it all up to get a final sh uh, shear capacity. And we'll do a couple checks at the very end, and we'll be good to go. So AV min, your minimum shear uh, reinforcement, is equal to 0 0.0007 AG, which is the gross area of your wall section. And that is per, again, the TMS 402, 118.326 gross area. Let's just do it per foot of wall. So that's gonna be 12 inches times, again, the width, which is actually 7.63 inches for eight inch block. And then we'll multiply that by the ratio. That spits out 0.064 inches squared of steel per foot of wall. Well, let's try a number four at 24 inches on center. AV from that is 0.2 for a number four bar. 24 inches on center, so you're gonna do 12 divided by 24. That gets you 0.1 inches squared per foot, which is greater than what we needed above. So that will work. But we also have spacing requirements and minimums to meet as well. So let's check those out. So max bar spacing S um, is the lesser of the following constraints. S equal to 48 inches is number one. Number two is H over three, the height of your wall, which is 16 feet. Let's get that into inches. So times 12 divided by three, it gets you 64 inches. And then case number three is LW over three, which is the length of our wall. So six feet, again, let's get it into inches, multiply by 12 divided by three. That gets you 24. Well, it's the lesser of all three of these scenarios which is gonna be this one. So 24 inches, and we chose 24 inches on center, so we, we meet um, or are less than that distance. Uh, so we are okay to do number fours at 24 inches on center for our uh, sheer horizontal reinforcement in our CMU shear wall. Now let's determine VNS, which is the shear strength from our uh, horizontal rebar. VNS is equal to 0 0.5 AV over S times FY times DV. And this again is the TMS 402 uh, equation 3-24. FY, we did take a peek at it above, is 60 KSI steel, standard rebar. DV, again, is the depth in the direction of your shear. So that's the length of wall, so six feet um, times 12 gets you 72 inches. And then AV is for just uh, one of the bars. So 0 0.2 inches squared is a number four and our spacing is 24 inches. So that's everything we plug in. That gets us 18 kips. And then phi is equal to 0 0.8. So phi VNS is equal to 14.4 kips. With that, we can determine our total shear capacity of our shear wall. So that equals phi VNM plus phi V and S, getting a 71.4 kips equal to phi V N. But we have just a couple more checks before we get to the very, very end. Um, we have a constraint here. So if MU over VU DV, our shear span to depth ratio, 
is greater than 1.0, then Vn need not exceed 4 An square root of F prime M. We did determine that uh, our shear to span ratio did equal greater than 1.0 of 2.48. Gets us 120 kips, which is greater than um, phi Vn, which is, uh, equates to 89.3 kips. And we get that if we just take 71.4 and uh, we divide by 0 0.8. So we get, we pull the phi out of it. And uh, this is true. So we're within our bounds, so we're okay here. And there you have it. You've just uh, calculated by hand the shear capacity of your reinforced masonry shear wall, fully grouted in seismic design category D. This is just a taste of masonry design. I myself, again, am just getting into it. If you found this helpful, you know what to do. Smash that like button. I'm really gonna say it like that. Questions, comments, if I potentially did something incorrect or left something out that's crucial, comment down below. It helps out everyone. It helps me out tremendously. And subscribe if you haven't yet. I'd love to see you in here more often, learning something along with me. All right, team, until next time, this is Rich with Team Kestaba. Later.